Hello, this time um, I decided that I would compare these two industrial uh, proximity sensors at the same time and explain their differences and hook them up at the same time so we can see how each one works. In the last video I just shot, I showed you how to do a digital read with this PNP device by using a voltage divider. In this case, I'm putting in 12 volts, and I need to cut that 12 volts down to around about 3.3 volts so that I can safely uh, take it into this 3.3 volt um, Teensy, which is Arduino compatible. And we did so with a 27K and a 10K resistor voltage divider tapping off the middle of the series pair and then being able to use that roughly 3.1 volt uh, uh, supply to switch it digitally on or digitally off. This case, we're going to be dealing mostly with this NPN device, NPN, our syncing device. So in other words, the black signal wire from this particular device is simply going to be on or off to ground. So if we have a source, it will allow it to flow. All right, no matter what the voltage is, it'll simply connect it to ground, which makes it really ideal for uh, hooking up to digital sensors. And I'll explain that uh, actually almost immediately. But first, I'm going to talk about the hookup. Okay, both of them are hooked up the same way, they have the same color scheme. I have the blue wires of both devices hooked up to this positive bus. I'm sorry, the negative bus. The negative bus. Repeat that again. The blue wires are both hooked up to the negative bus, which are hooked to the ground wire, which goes to the common ground. The brown wires are both hooked up to the positive bus, which in this case follows this red set of wires to the positive set of pins, which are currently set to VN, which means that they're getting 12 volts. So both the NPN device and the PNP device are being powered by 12 volts. The PNP device, I have the black wire, the signal wire, going to a voltage divider. Because if we're going to, this is a sourcing device, this PNP, which means that black wire is going to output around about 12 volts with what we're putting in, a little less. And we need to safely cut that voltage down to something that this 3.3 volt TNC uh, can handle. And so the voltage divider, we can, in this case, we use a 27K and a 10K, which in practice brought us down to about 3.1 volts. And we have that hooked up to pin 11. And we're doing a simple check, and I'll show you that in code to see whether or not it's high or low. Like I said, this other device is a syncing device. So somehow what we need to do is we need to make this pin high. Okay, we need to have it charged, and we need to have measure its state so that if it hooks up to ground, if it if this black wire, if the metal gets in proximity and the black wire coming off of it connects to ground, then that voltage will go low and the pin will go low because the, the, uh, the electrons will take the path of least resistance and they're not going to flow into the chip, but rather they're going to flow to ground and this pin will go low and the signal will be low. Okay, so let's look at that in code. Uh, and see what it is I did. Uh, from the last video on the PNP digital, if you want to look at that, feel free. But I basically started with this example from uh, examples, uh, basics, and uh, digital read serial. From there, I built this code and I renamed it. Uh, so, in which case, I have two devices I have my PNP and my NPN device. PNP, the black wire, the output is ultimately going to be connected to pin 11, where I'm going to be reading its high-low state. And the NPN device is going to be uh, hooked up to pin 12, where I'm going to be measuring its high-low state. Here's where the big difference comes in. The PNP device is sourcing. Okay, We're going to be dividing that voltage down to 3.1, so it can measure it as either 3.1 or not, okay? So it's going to be on or off, high or low. In the NPN device, it's a syncing device. So somehow we have to put some charge on the pin, hold it high, and then wait for it to go low when it hooks to ground. 
Fortunately, most of these devices these days have what's called an, a pull-up resistor built in, which essentially is going to hook up a resistor to, if this is my pin, it's going to hook a, connect the resistor, which is hooked to my source. It's around a 30K resistor, and it's going to hold this pin weakly charged. Okay, So if I read the state of the pin, it's going to say it's high because there's a charge going in from this 30K resistor. But if I connect this pin to ground, well suddenly the electrons have a path of low resistance to go to earth and the reading of the pin becomes low because the electrons will take the path of least resistance. Okay, So we hold the, the pin positively charged okay, by pulling up that resistor. Then I'm going to go down here and I'm going to do two digital reads. I'm going to get the, call it the PNP state, and I'm going to do a digital read PNP, and then I'm going to do the NPN state and do a digital read NPN. Keep in mind, if there's no metal in proximity for the NPN, we would expect there to be a charged pin. And if there's a charged pin, it's going to read high in the absence of metal. Okay? Because the pin is charged. We haven't given it a way to escape. We haven't given the electrons any way out. So it's going to read it as a high state without metal present. In the case of the PMP device, okay, without metal present, it's going to be reading a low state because we haven't turned on the source. So these are going to be inverted states without the presence of metal. And then I'm going to output it. I'm going to output the PNP state, a concatenated string, and it's going to give us that value of a 1 or a 0. And I'm going to output the NPN state, and it's going to give us a concatenated string, and it's going to give us the state of the NPN. So if we look at that output, we can see, oh, it looks like I'm going to have to, oh, there it is, running. Okay. Like I said, let me move this, I think we're kind of done with this one. I'll pull it down a little bit. And pull that down. Okay, I currently have nothing here. Okay, so the both of these, the LEDs are off. Okay, there is no metal in proximity, so the PNP sourcing device is going to be low because there's no source coming from it. Okay, once the NPN device is also does not have any metal in front of it. It is also going to be disconnected from ground, but we have that resistor held high, which means the resistor is currently charged. And if I ask the resistor, are you high or not? It's gonna say, yes, I am, because it is not able to connect to ground. So its state is gonna be a one or high because it has no way to get rid of the electrons. Okay, So if I put this block of metal between the two, and we can see the LEDs turn on. I don't know if you can see that in the video, but it's dimly brighter. The LED is on, and we see that the PNP went high, and the NPN went low. Remove the metal. The states invert. Okay, Put it back in. The states come back. Oh, it's refreshing its screen. There we go. All right, so hopefully that was useful and uh, explains the difference between these two devices. And perhaps I'll quickly shoot one last video here, hooking it up to uh, a digital uh, optically oscillated relay and turn on a couple of different devices corresponding to the presence of metal. So I will see you again shortly, and I'll see you soon.